Hi, welcome back to my garden. So over winter, I did a bunch of different propagation projects. And now about three months later, a bunch of them have rooted and are ready to be potted on. So I thought I would just show you an update. Um, there were a few different things that I did. I transplanted a whole tray of volunteer lupins. So these were from a patch of red lupins that had just like self-seeded. And right as they were like sprouting up, I just picked them up and lay them in a tray basically. So these ones I decided not to plant out right away because I don't think that they're gonna come true from the seed. So like, I don't think they'll be red because one of the parents was red because we also have like yellow ones, ivory ones, blue ones. <laughs> so I feel like they could be any of those. But anyway, I probably should have potted them up a little while ago because they rooted like into the mulch that the tray was laying on. So I thought I would pot them up into like gallon sized pots and then let them bloom, see what they look like. And then I can transplant them like in the fall into the beds uh, where they'll look good. And then they'll get like bigger and better for next year. I also have the Harlequin um, red stick dogwood tree. So this one I like wove together this winter as well. And almost all the canes have rooted. There were a few that didn't make it, but I think what I'll do is I'll plant it somewhere in the garden and then um, next winter, take out the dead ones and replace them with new living ones. And they should still root in, like they're, they're really good at doing that. And then the biggest propagation project this past winter was basically going around to a bunch of different like shrubs and trees that I like and just taking cuttings of them. So I did like the monkey puzzle, I did like dutzia, a bunch of different hydrangeas, willows, dogwoods. Um, I think that was like the majority of it. Most of them have rooted, so I want to show off the roots because they're kind of amazing, like how much they've grown in, like it's been just over three months since I did that project. So um, anyway, kind of amazing. The monkey puzzle, I like tried to wiggle them a little bit and they seemed kind of firm, but I didn't want to risk disturbing if they have like the start of roots or anything coming out. So anyway, so those ones I just left. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm gonna get like up potting, so I'll show you what I'm doing. That's the lupins all done. So next for them is basically just to just put them somewhere sunny, make sure that they're still like watered well. They should get like fill in their roots like pretty quickly. Some of them were kind of root bound. Um, anyway, so they should fill in their pots pretty quickly. And then maybe in the fall, I'll plant them out in the garden. Like once I know the bloom color, if not, I feel like they'd be fine in the size pot through the winter. And then I can plant them out in early spring too. So. Um, yeah, so that's those. So let me show you some of these roots <laughs> um, on these hardwood cuttings. So for these guys, it's basically um, all hardwood cuttings, which is last year's growth that I took in late winter this year. And I'm gonna do two different things. There's some of them which have rooted. I'm gonna show you this hydrangea. <laughs> so this is a hydrangea arborescence. So it was just like a cutting and it's just like full of roots. So that's super exciting. Um, so for this one, I'm going to pot it up like a size bigger. So maybe something this size and then just like grow it on like that. Um, I believe by the end of the summer, this will be fully rooted and then I can plant it in the fall. It'll get super established over winter and then like be huge and beautiful next year. <laughs> so there's that one. The willows predictably have done like very, very well. So. I have five different cuttings of these and they're actually like almost like root bound. Hopefully these all like show up on the camera. So the plan for these is I have like five decent cuttings. So because willow, you can literally just stick the stick in the ground and it will probably root. I think I'm actually gonna just take them I'll like auger a hole and then just like put the thing in with as many roots as possible and then backfill it. So I think I'm gonna do that with all of these, just like plant them straight into the garden. These ones are um, a panicle hydrangea. So I probably should have like cut off the blooms, but I don't know, they're just like going for it. So I thought I would just like let them do their thing. And again, these ones like, it's just like amazing to me.
like, I don't know, just like <laughs> these like little cuttings and then they just have like so many roots coming off from like two different nodes. So like that one specifically should be pretty established. And these plants get huge too. I think panicle hydrangeas, I don't know. I feel like they're like wild state, I think can get like 20 feet tall. Um, so that's those ones. These are more of the arborescence type hydrangeas. And again, you can see by all the new growth that these ones are doing well. <laughs> I'll show you the roots on these ones too. I opened this up the other day. Like that's like a fat root and it's actually doing like a side shoot that will come up and become its own plant. So like these are kind of clumpers. So eventually they just get bigger and bigger. Another way to propagate these that I've done is like, you can just like lie a branch down on the dirt. So like move any mulch out of the way and just have it like directly on the dirt. You can mulch over it and just put like a rock on it. And then whenever you water the plant, if you water it, you can just like water that area too. And eventually it'll root. And then once it's like rooted, you can cut it off from the mother and then like separate it and move it somewhere else. So I did that with a couple other hydrangeas and like this year it's their second year in the ground and I'm pretty sure they're gonna bloom already. So from the Dutzia, there was only one success. Oh wait, is this the Dutzia? I guess this is why it's important to label. No, this is the Pink Dawn Viburnum. <laughs> so um, there is just like one of these that survived but it has like several growth points. So I think it's been like successful and I think I'll just like take this one out and I might even just plant it back into this, but I'll just get rid of the other cuttings and maybe give it slightly better soil because originally the soil was just meant to be really well draining and also moisture retentive because um, they don't need like that much energy in this stage. They just want like a good medium to grow in, to root in. Um, so yeah, so I might give it like slightly better soil so that it can actually just like grow on a bit. I might have to zoom the camera out <laughs> for this next one because it's like, I have a six foot six arm span, fingertip to fingertip. And I don't know if you can see, there's an extra like, at least three feet on the end. So this is a beauty bush. And generally when you take a cutting, like I feel like most instructions say like a pencil width and length. So like, I don't know, eight inches, a couple of nodes, kind of this thickness. <laughs> With these, like there are no rules. They just like root so easily. So this one not only rooted, it actually flowered for me too. So I don't want to mess the roots too much, but it's like already somewhat like root bound even. So this one's just going to go in a bigger pot. I could put it straight in the ground, but because it's so tall and floppy, I thought having like a heavier root ball would benefit it once I move it into the landscape. And I'm just going to leave this one lying down. <laughs> And then I have, the rest is all like dogwoods. So these are the yellow stick version of the dogwood. And you can see by like all the growth, basically all the ones that have green growth are alive. So that's great. <laughs> they also, um, the new growth, or sorry, the live growth turns kind of green over the summer as they grow. And you can tell which ones are dead because those ones have stayed red. But that's actually a nice feature of this wood is that it keeps its color when it dries. So if the whole thing had been unsuccessful, I could just keep it as like an obelisk and then have like a clematis or something climb up of it, which would look really pretty. So, you know, live or dead, like these things are pretty awesome. <laughs> these are the red stick ones. And like these ones are still somewhat red, but they have a ton of new growth. So I know these are definitely alive and I think every one of these was successful. So with these ones like the willow, because they're rooted and because they root so like readily, I'm actually just gonna take them all individually and plant them in the late landscape. This one, I think I'm gonna try and find a good spot for, but I wanted to maybe have a look at the roots, but honestly, I can just see them all trying to escape from the pot. So this thing I think is definitely ready to go into the landscape. So I'll wait and do that when I have the spot. I'm gonna plant the tall one first. So that should be good. And these ones generally just want like good access to moisture. 
and they you can also divide the big clumps so this summer or this winter i took just like a portion of the big mother plant i have that's like super wide it's probably at least six foot wide and at least 10 feet tall um so i took a portion of it and just like planted it in the landscape and i've just made sure to water it when it's been dry and that one like looks amazing it's bloomed for me and i think it'll just get like fuller and fuller and the hummingbirds absolutely love these i would say it's one of their favorites and because it blooms for about a month it's like a really good plant so just keeping the original soil level packing down the soil around so that it's nice and firm and then this soil mix is like a mix of the soil pile that I'm on now. And so 50% that and 50% are compost, which is nice and chunky. It's not like all the way decomposed. So there's like little like wood pieces that will hold moisture and stuff too. So that's this one. <laughs> so these are the hydrangea arborescence, which are North American native. Um, I think Annabelle hydrangea is like the most kind of the like classic, maybe one of the original cultivated ones. So this is actually kind of being held together, I think. So I might just plant oops, <laughs> this one as one. I'm just trying to keep as much of like the root system intact to This one's just a little one, but it has so many roots that I think it'll be fine. One of my things, my, one of my favorite things about adding the compost to the soil mix is that it's like full of worms. So it always feels like, I don't know, the cuttings or whatever plants are getting like the best of the best. <laughs> So anyway, that's kind of amazing. So that's like five cuttings. Um, so we'll have like five of these like hydrangeas. These all get like pretty big. So like, I don't know, maybe there's like a future hedge or something happening with these. Sweet, so this was the other of the arborescence one that was like a solo. And then I have the panicle ones here. So kind of same scene for these, just gonna take them out, separate them as gently as I can. And I feel like, you know, if I wanted it to be fuller faster, I could even leave these together. I don't think it would be too bad for them. I'm pretty sure that's what they do in like, when you buy these in like a nursery pot, sometimes it will be like a few of them clumped together. Um, but these are because they can get so huge and because they have kind of a good start to their roots i feel like in no time they will fill in their pots and then be ready to go out and again with these it's just keeping the soil level the same as like what they were used to as much as possible i know these ones are pretty forgiving as well <laughs> Okay, this one's the most like, you know, I was gonna say pathetic, but that's not very nice, but just like it has the least growth. So this one's like, it probably would have benefited from not being transplanted yet, but because I'm doing all the others, I'm just gonna do this one too. Um, I would say I'm gonna keep an eye on it, but I know I'm not. So I'm just gonna treat it like all the others and just like hope for the best. That's one of the advantages of dealing in like free plants <laughs> is that it's like, there's kind of a little less at stake. Like each of these plants would easily be like 30 or $40 if it was in like, you know, this or maybe this size pot. So, you know, getting all of these for free just from cuttings is kind of amazing. So we call this area the guillotine, which is a little dark, but basically it's like the clothesline deck. And um, it's a great spot for propagating stuff because it gets morning light till about, I don't know, two, depending on the time of year. 
and then it doesn't get that like hot afternoon sun. So for props, it's like amazing because they still get a ton of sunlight. So everything's arranged over here. And this is a good hydrangea propping area. <laughs> These are some of the oak leaf hydrangeas that I also propagated on video, like when I divided my big clump. But these ones, I didn't, um, they have like a few roots starting to show, like I'm not even sure if those will show up on camera, but I think that they're gonna go into their main um, growth like now as it starts to get a little warmer. So I figured I'd leave these in this size pot for a little while longer and cause they're already individual. So yeah, I have the pink dawn vine burnum, the five arborescents, the other arborescents, and then the five panicle hydrangeas. So these will be happy here for a while. I'll just like water them in really well and just keep them well watered. Um, so yeah, let's go put those other plants in the landscape. So this is kind of wild. So these are just our like native red stick dogwood <laughs> and they've rooted so much considering this was just like three months ago. It was mid-March. I guess now it's like end of June. So yeah, like three and a half months ago. <laughs> so I've, I don't even know if these ones will really want to be separated, but we'll see what we can do. So I might be sacrificing some of the roots by doing it like this, but it doesn't really want to separate, so. And based on how quickly these roots grew, I think it'll be fine. <laughs> And then this one kind of has the rest. So the idea was to separate all the willows and dogwoods so that they're in kind of plantable sizes. <laughs> and then it'll just make it easier going around and just like making holes and popping them in. So I have my buckets ready with all the different cuttings and I'm gonna go find homes for them. Basically the idea is kind of the same for both the willows and the dogwoods. They all have the best winter color on like the new growth, so like the past year's growth. So I think what I'm gonna do is leave them alone for this year, leave all their tops on, just like let them like put in a lot of energy, let them root. We know that they really like to root, so I think they'll do amazing. <laughs> um, so there's kind of like an informal like hedge of five of these red stick dogwoods, and then I have two more in this area as well, so there'll be seven all together. And those ones are a few years ahead. So basically, come spring, I'm gonna come in and cut it down maybe about here. So there's three sets of buds, and also it can grow like extra stems from along the way. So then it'll flush out next summer a bunch of new vigorous upright growth because it will already be really established. That will have amazing winter color. And then from there, I can kind of take it year by year. Some people like to cut it all back like every other year. Others will come in and just thin the oldest branches and leave like the new ones each year. So there's kind of different ways to manage it. But especially in winter, like there's some cool foliage plants here. I'm not sure what's in this shot, but there's like some like blue spruces and some pines, some low growing junipers. So there will be some kind of leafiness or needliness and then to have some like bright stems and um, as contrast I think will look amazing. So I ended up planting the yellow stick dogwoods kind of at this end of the shadow and white garden. So this mostly has white blooms and then interesting colors of like foliage and stems in this case. So I already had kind of these two bigger ones planted here so I added um, five more bringing it to seven 
And these ones will become like a little bit of like a hedge at the front. The dogs love to bark at this corner here because it's like the one spot that they can see out of. So anyway, I think having like a little more stuff to like obstruct the view will be helpful. So yeah, so they're all planted all along here. And just like I said for the red ones, like this spring I can come in and cut them back and then they'll become a little bit bushier, kind of like the two more established ones are. But yeah, I think this will look amazing in winter. When the sun is low in the sky, it'll kind of hit them from this angle. They'll just like glow and then the hedge will look really dark behind. So I think it will just be like an awesome focal point. So this is the mother willow plant that I took the cuttings from um, this past winter. And I planted the last two of the cuttings kind of nearby. So I have this rose that I've been training up against the wall. I've only been training it since the fall, so it's kind of the first year, but it's like, there's so many more blooms than there were, which is amazing. And I thought like the cutting when it fills in, just the variegation of the leaves is so similar to the color of the rose that I feel like it'll look awesome. And these will get pretty big. I think this will easily get kind of like four by four um, without me controlling it at all. And then the other one is like right over here. So these ones tend to be more green when they have less sun, but this is a pretty sunny spot and there's good access to moisture. So I don't see why it wouldn't do really well. The peonies, <laughs> the roses. And then yeah, so that's the mother willow there. And then I have this one dogwood here already that I'm trying to grow almost in like a tree form. Um, the neighbor's hedge that you can see back there is all dogwood as well. So I thought it would kind of like, I don't know, borrow the landscape or whatever, just bring the background in a little bit. So I wanted to continue that. So this is like a big kind of mixed hedge. Um, but I wanted to repeat the dogwood over here. And this is also next to a red flowering current, which is the same situation as the other one. Those are both native and they just like pair really well together. And then the last one, which is the biggest one, is behind these two Japanese maples. That's one of the roses that I divided. So it's like, it was one clump. So there's one here and then I planted the other three here. So that's also pretty awesome. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, up against the fence. That's a pretty wet spot too. So I think you'll be happy. And that's our native Oregon grape, the tall one. Um, anyway, so I feel like it can kind of start to fill this area in up here. Like once I prune it, I'll prune it higher so that it gets bushy near the top. So the only one that I haven't planted is this one because I want to find like a really good home for it because I, I won't want to move it. Uh, all the other ones are a little more forgiving if I decide that there's a better spot for them. But yeah, that's basically all of them either in the ground or in their new pots. And the ones that are in their pots will stay there all summer. I can plant out in the fall. The other ones, I'll just make sure that they're watered um, kind of when we get like into dry weather. But generally they should be pretty good because they have such good roots. So thanks for coming along for today. Um, and I'll catch you next time.